teaching. The Bible is not an easy book to understand. Neither is the Quran. There are simple truths in the Bible that are clear for anybody. But there are complexities in both the Bible and Quran that the ordinary common person will never understand. But the cross is a very powerful symbol that needs to be understood. It represents the two uh, natures in the human being. The duality in the human being. It represents the horizontal nature of man. That man can act like the lower animals, the beasts of the field. And that is what we are familiar with. But it also represents the upright and vertical nature of man. That he is created in the nature of uprightness. But there's always a struggle between the two natures. The carnal mind and the spiritual mind. The flesh and the spirit. One represents the satisfaction of the earthly part of us. And the other represents the feeding of the deeper more significant part of us one is the temporal part of us which came up from the earth and has to return to the earth and the other is that which comes from God and can and only be fed by God and developed into the mind and spirit of God in every human being is the germ of God himself mm -hmm. but that germ like a seed has to be fed if it is properly fed it grows us into the mind of God himself but you have got to be born of God and that's why Jesus said you can't see the kingdom of heaven unless you are what born again you were born once that was fine that was from your mother and that's good. You're here now. What you're going to do with your presence? You've got to be born one more time. To come up out of the world of the enemy and come into the world and the mind and the wisdom and the spirit and the will of God. I'm saying this to all my young brothers. You, know, you are so powerful. But you're giving yourselves to the wrong power. If you would just let God come into your life. He will make you a new kind of human being. Yes, sir. Because you're born warriors for God. But you're misdirected. You're into gangs over some little dope. Some little jive community. God wants you to take the whole world and put it under your foot. Hey. So when you see me, you see my father. Hey. I'm in my father and my father's in me. Lewis died a long time ago. Elijah lives in me. Jesus lives in me. You're looking at him. You're walking with him. You're talking with him. Oh. Hmm. To not misunderstand what I just said. It's not me alone. It's you. You can be that too. You ain't going to meet the real devil. You ain't got high enough yet. You got to get past your friends. Hey man, what's, what's this? You cleaning up. Hey man. What's wrong with you? You don't want to light up, man? I got the pipe. I got the pipe. You don't want no reefer no more? What's wrong with you, girl? See, you got to get past that. 
See, you put on a righteous garment. Somebody mock you. What is that, my Aunt Jemima clothes you got on, baby? What is that you got on your head? They start laughing at you. See, and then you can't take it. Next thing you know, you back in your tight jeans again. Hey, now you, now, baby, you got some sense. <laughs> right back where you wanted to be. And fell right back down. For what? But when you get up, get your wings and get up. When you get to a certain height, you got to meet him because he's there and he's pure fire. Mm. But when you got your stuff, you put on the whole armor of God. Oh, yeah. You got your helmet on. You got your breastplate of salvation. Oh, yeah. You got your foot shod with the shoes of the gospel. Yeah. You got the sword of truth. You ready? You dealing now. And you get up to the ceiling of gravity, here comes Satan. But he can't stand, you can. You got him beat, you get on through his fire. And that's the way it is. When you start rising, you start dealing first with your mother, your father, your friends. You come into a knowledge that your mom don't know, your daddy don't know. Maybe your preacher didn't know. Then they get shook up when you share it with them. And then they say, oh no, can't be right. Then your family start beating you down. You got to have your wings, man. You got to have your rocket strong, hey. brother. Hey. Huh? Now you're rolling. But you got to get past mama. You got to get past daddy. But it takes courage. Now I'm going on up in the air. I got my rocket. You got to be tested by the people around you. People that are supposed to be your friends. And some of them will pull you down because they don't like it if you're too strong. If you want to fast for three days, somebody will offer you some food because they want to test you. They don't want to fast, so they don't want you to fast. So you say, no, I don't feel like eating. I'm fasting this weekend. And so for what? Why are you fasting? You trying to lose weight or something? People don't just fast because they fat. A fast because it's a spiritual discipline that allows us to get control of ourselves. Yeah. You got people all around you to try to tear you down. But your rocket got to be lit. And I went on past that. Now I'm up in the air. Now I'm meeting the real devils now. They're all down there in Washington. You ain't got to them yet. But I'm there with them now. And they'll never defeat me. Not as long as I'm in God and God is in me. They can't calculate the strength that I have. Because to calculate my strength is to calculate the strength of God. And they ain't got no machine to calculate his strength. I'm telling you, man, if you want to be something... Let God come into your life. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Why don't you come on and walk with me? Yes, sir. Pick up your cross. Yes. It's one for me, but it's one for you too. Yes. You stand up on truth and they'll eat you alive. They'll try to. But if you've got God in you and your rocket is tight, the fire in your rocket will burn them. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you resist Satan, he'll flee from you. Will you take on that strength now? Yes, sir. Only God can make a man. And only God can make a woman. And if you will allow him, he'll not only make us men and women, he'll make us gods as we once were in the beginning. Thank you for listening and may Allah bless each and every one of you for coming out tonight. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Well, thank you so much.
divine men never die because that which they lived for is eternal and the word that they teach is gone beyond their physical frame. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's why Jesus lives and Moses lives and Abraham lives and the righteous live. It is only the wicked who die. Because when you pick up your Bible, your Bible tells you of a day of judgment. Yes, sir. You don't want to believe that you're living in it. That's right. That's right. The Bible tells you that a day would be coming. That men and women and the children would be doing strange things. The Bible tells you. That nation would rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there would be earthquakes and famine and pestilence. You talk about listening to the news. And the white boy that is your favorite meteorologist. That you put confidence in when he tells you it's going to rain. You get your raincoat. Cause that white man know what he talking about but the white boy don't know how to predict no weather today when he said one thing another thing happens because another power is on scene today and he can't read that power but the thing is when the Bible become real and somebody jumps off the page of the Bible and start living it, that's when you get frightened. You don't mind reading the Bible in your bathroom or reading it under the bed somewhere. But if a man come off the page and then say to a modern Pharaoh, let him go. And say to the modern Jew that you are the synagogue of Satan. If I see it and I see it, What can they do against me? But whatever Allah please. As the Jews instigated the Roman authorities against Jesus. They are instigating the fall of this government. And they are instigating the government to do something about me right away. I say, come on. Yes, you don't pray. We don't pray enough. You call him five times a day, but you can't call on God till you get in trouble. That's why there's no balance in your life, because God is not real until you get in trouble. Then we know how to call him and make our prayers sincere. We got to turn this around. If you really want balance, come back to God. If you really want balance, make God number one. Because whether you know it or not, you were born into this world inclined toward him first. 